We're going to do a conservation of momentum lab using this equipment. We've got a dynamics track. We've got two dynamics carts, one with a plunger, one without. An additional mass and a rubber stopper on a stick so that we can activate the plunger. On this dynamics track, on here there is a centimeter ruler that we're going to use to measure distances with. The first thing we need to do though is get the masses of our objects. So I'm going to use a triple beam balance to get the mass for each one. Starting with the cart with the plunger. Okay. We have a mass of just about there. So we have a mass of five hundred and twelve point one grams for the plunger cart the mass of the non plunger carts is around if it steadies out it looks like it's to be about 500 Twelve point seven kilograms, nearly point eight. Okay, five hundred twelve point eight kilograms. I'm sorry, grams. Five hundred twelve point eight grams. Now, the mass of the block that we're going to attach at some point. If they hold consistent. Oh, a little bit more. This block seems to have a mass of about 516.6 grams. The cart with the plunger attached to it 
the plunger can be pushed in and then when you hit this button on top the plunger pops out and that's going to provide the force that we're going to use to separate these two carts for our lab we're going to start off with everything sitting still where the carts are coming together right at the midpoint of our track now on this track this stop is set up at the one centimeter mark while the other stop on the other side is set up on the 118 centimeter mark so it means we're going to set up the two carts so that they are at the 57 and a half centimeter mark when we first activate the plunger. Okay. I need to actually turn these around. There we go. So, the carts are going to be put together at the 57 and a half centimeter mark. So, this cart's going to go from here, which is about 41 centimeters until it collides with this stop which is at three centimeters so that's the distance it's going to travel this one is going to go from about it looks like the 73.8 centimeter mark to the 118 centimeter mark that's where it will collide when I activate the plunger we're going to start off with the cart setting still I'm going to activate the plunger this cart is going to go that way and crash into the side. This cart's going to go this way and crash into the side. And you're going to time from when I activate the plunger until when that cart hits the stop at the end. Don't worry about any rebound. Here's trial one of both carts of nearly equal mass. I want to activate the plunger on three. So I'll go one, two, three and activate the plunger. Time this cart from when I activate the plunger to when it hits this side. Time this cart from when I activate the plunger to when it hits this side. Ready? Here we go. One, two, three. One, two, three. Let's do that again. We'll get several different tries. I'll again start it off at 57 and a half centimeters. Ready? Trial number two. One, two, three. One, two, three. And for the third trial, fifty-seven and a half centimeters. One, two, three. One, two, three. All right. Now you know the distance and the time. You can figure out the velocity of this cart, and with its mass, find its momentum. You can find the velocity of this cart, knowing the distance and time. With that mass, find its momentum. One cart's going one direction, one cart's going the other direction, so you have to say one way's positive and the other way's negative. What was the momentum of the carts before we hit the plunger when they were setting steel? Now, conservation momentum says that should be the total momentum of the system as long as there's no outside forces acting upon it. Did you find that to be equal to the momentum of the system after I activate the plunger? Do that calculation and see what you get. Now we're going to do the same experiment, except this time I'm going to add this additional mass to this cart. So now this cart has the equivalent mass of the block and this cart. Well, this one still has its original mass. Again, we're going to do three trials. I'm going to activate the plunger on the count of three, so one, two, three. Time this cart from when I activate the plunger to when it hits the track. Then time this one from when I activate the plunger to it hits this end of the track. And we're going to calculate the momentum of each one. Again, starting off with both carts sitting still. 
So what's the total momentum of the system? For trial one, here we go. One, two, three. For trial one, here we go. One, two, three. Again, we're gonna do three trials. Trial number two, one, two, three. One, two, three. Third trial. Ready? Um, let me put this mask against that side. Okay. Ready? One, two, three. Ready? One, two, three. Now, you know the distance on this side and the time. You know the distance to travel on this side and the time. Figure out the average speeds for each one. And with the mass of each one, figure out the total momentum of the system after the plunger has been activated and see how that relates to the total momentum of the system before the plunger was activated.